Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Luke Riley, and uh, I'm a student at Wake Tech Community College. I'm a freshman there, and this is my presentation on the Duke Gardens Watershed Analysis. Okay, so uh, a wise man once told me that if you have something that's going to take you 10 hours to do, but you only have five hours to do it, it's only going to take you five hours. So this morning, when I started uh, thinking about how I would start on my presentation, I, uh, I, I figured out that I'd want to begin the same way I began every project. Um, the way I begin every project is simply by um, getting data from a good and uh, reliable source. I've used this website, the nc1map.gov, um, numerous times for quite a few different projects I've done. Um, and it's just been, it's been really wonderful. Uh, I can't, can't, you know, tell you guys to use it enough. It's, it's really been great. Um, so once I received the data, I got, I got lots of data, but once I received the data, um, I like to put it in to ArcMap and to check it out. So I, I check it out, um, by putting it in the, in the, in the, in the map and looking at it. And then, um, I, I look at it in the, in ArcMap and our catalog and, uh, and I also look in it in as its uh, attribute tables. So those 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 three things really ArcMap, our catalog, and in the attribute tables have really they've been stressed to uh, me especially at uh, at Wake Tech um, just to understand your data because before you begin working with the data, it's really important. Uh, I've been told and I, I agree with um, that you know your data. Um, so here is some of the data that I started with. This right here is the Duke Gardens. Um, parcel data and the um, just the other Durham parcel data. Um, so I put those both into ArcMap and this is what it looks like. Um, next I put the uh, Durham contour data into ArcMap and I checked it out in the um, attribute table. Um, so again, those things are really, really important and just good sources of information information about the, um, the data that you're using. Um, the the attribute table can really help you understand the boundaries of the data that you have, um, if it's repetitive, you know, if certain data is repetitive of other of other data, and just you know what data is just other other waves you know useless. Um, so there's the Durham contour data. I checked it out. Um, next is the Duke and Dur Duke Garden and Durham um, hydrology data. Um, again, it shows. Um, it shows data from all over um, Durham, and there's also some major hydrology. There's a hydrology major uh, layer over there. That doesn't really affect the Duke Gardens um, parcel because it's, there's nothing really that major around um, Duke Gardens. Um, and I checked out in ARC map, ARC catalog, and in the attribute table. Um, this next box um, is where I begin actually working on the data. So that was just understanding and processing it. Um, so this next slide is me uh, working on the process data. So the first thing I did was I ran the buffer tool. Um, so I set the buffer tool dialog box up like this. Um, Duke Gardens parcel as the as the input. Um, I named the the buffer DG buff 400 to denote the 400 foot buffer that I put right below it. And um, over there on the left is also the uh, place where you can find it on our toolbox. Um, yes. Okay, this is what the Arc Toolbox um, tool buffer did to the data that I had. So I put the 400 foot buffer around it and um, I added it to Arc Map with the Duke Garden parcel as well. Okay, so the next tool I ran was the uh, cut tool. I ran the cut tool on the Durham County hydrography um, data. I, the clip tool I used was the uh, Duke Garden parcel, not the buffed one, just the um, one that goes through the Duke Garden one, the Duke Garden parcel itself, sorry. Um, and I named that output feature class uh, Hydro DG Clip. Um, one other thing that's been really stressed to us students at Wake Tech and I hope everywhere else is uh, the importance of good uh, file naming and file path designation. Um, I, it's a little different for students because um, at, at least at Wake Tech, um, they're, they're, you know, the 
computers are wiped every night. Um, so when we save it, we have to save it in a place that when we go back to take it out to our home, it's easy to, um, you know, rebuild the data. Uh, so this, that's really been important to me. Um, the next slide is what the cut tool looked like after I ran it. So if you'll remember, um, in the past couple slides, there were, um, you know, data, the hydrography data was just going all over the place. You couldn't really make use of it because it was, you know, going every which way. But once I cut it down using the uh, Arc Toolbox tool, the clip tool, um, it looks like this and it's much more um, usable. Okay, the next thing I did was I ran the, or I didn't run anything, I added the dim data. Um, but before even adding the dim data, I knew that it was useless, if not clipped to the, uh, the Duke Garden part that I wanted. So I, uh, I, I used the clip, the, a different clip tool this time. Um, this one is the raster clip tool. So it's in Arc Toolbox, it's under data management, um, raster, and then raster processing. So that's a little bit different than the just regular clip tool, and it's, uh, it's different, and it's also very important. Um, then I named I, I, the input raster I used as that, um, that Durham data that I downloaded again from that NC1 map. That's just great, great website for data. Um, the output extent I named DG buff 400 or sorry, the, the clip, the clipping tool. It only works as a clipping tool. If you actually check that box down low that it, it use input feature for clipping geometry, that's, uh, it doesn't really run as well as you'd like it to, if you don't click, check that box, but um, so the clipping tool I used was DG buff 400 and I named the output DG dim 20 C to denote the clip that C is for clip. Okay. And this is what it looks like when I added it to arc map it again, I, I uh, clipped it around that um, DG buff 400 um, just so that I could get a better understanding of what it was actually doing to the map uh, what it was actually doing to my data um, in later, later pictures, you'll see why it's important um, to not just have a little bit, uh, the more the merrier really in this in this setting <clears throat> okay and this is the current lap map layout uh, after i added the um the the dem data I, I went back a second and showed you the what it's what it's currently look like um with the hydro uh duke garden parcel and the dg 400 uh buff 400 sorry um, so that's what that looks like right there and then the next slide, this one shows the DEM C. Obviously, you can't see the, the hydro data and the um, parcel data itself um, because that DEM is kind of, well, it's not kind of, it's overlapping it and you can't see anything really that's going on underneath it. Okay, so the next slide, um, I'm finally moving on to delineating the watershed now that I'm done with just um, working on that uh, preliminary data, really. I, uh, I, I began to work on the actual watershed. Okay, so the first thing you do before you um, begin any work in, in really any of the major tools um, is you need to turn on your uh, spatial analysis extension. So to do that, you're going to go to the um, Arc Toolbox, or not the Arc Toolbox, the Arc Map uh, menu, customize, and you'll click extensions, and then you'll turn off, or sorry, you'll, you'll turn on the checkbox for spatial analysis. So that's important. You can't really run any of the spatial analysis tools without that on. I've tried many times and it doesn't work, I assure you. Um, okay, so the next step for uh, delineating the watershed was the flow direction tool. Um, that can be found in ArcMap or Arc, Arc Toolbox under uh, Spatial Analysis Tools, Hydrology, and it's right there at flow direction. Um, so the input uh, surface raster was DG Dem 20 c the one I just created a second ago, and I named the output uh, flow direction, flow under dir. Um, again, file path designation and file naming is really important. <clears throat> okay, so here's what the map looks like now that I added that um, flow direction data. And um, again, you can't see anything that's going on underneath it. Um, I, I, you could try, but you couldn't see anything. Um, so that's what that looks like. Okay, so the next thing I needed to do was um, check my data for sinks. Sinks in this map um, would, rec would um, represent depressions, either real or erroneous. Um, sinks impede the ability of the water to flow in a certain direction, so uh, I knew that I needed to check those and then get those um, taken care of. So the first thing I did was I ran the sink tool. That can be found in Arc Toolbox under Spatial Analysis Tools, Hydrology, and uh, Sink. So I, the input flow raster I used was floater, and output raster I named Sink, plain and simple. 
Uh, this is what it looks like when the sync data is added. And the next thing I needed to do was fill those sinks, um, the sink, you know, depressions and whatnot. Um, to do that, I use the fill geoprocessing tool. Um, that tool can be found in our toolbox under, again, spatial uh, analysis tools, hydrology, and fill. So obviously you really do need to make sure that um, you, you understand where that spatial analysis checkbox is because you can't do a whole lot of um, really useful tools if you don't have it checked. Uh, I named the the input surface raster was DG, D, DG dem 20 c the clip data um, that I'd already made, and then I named the output filled. This is what it looks like when I added it to the arc map, and it's um, again you can't see anything that's going on underneath, so I just left them all on, all the other ones on. Um, okay, so after I'd filled the sinks, I knew that I needed to. Um, get another flow direction because it was uh, is different than the first time. Um, so I went back and I ran the same thing again. Um, this time, I, uh, the flow direction I or the input surface raster I used was filled, uh, and I named the output flow dir two, flow under dir two. Okay, um, this is what it looked like when I added uh, the map to or the data to the map. Finally, some color. All right. Um, and I put that little boundary around it just so you can uh, get a reference point where we were at again. Um, so the next tool I needed to run after running that second flow, dire flow direction was um, uh, oh sorry before I before I go next the, the, uh, another thing that's been really stressed to us students at Wake Tech is the uh, importance of um, layout skills. So. You know, at the end of each assignment, almost every assignment, we have to make a layout of the map, and that's one of the turn turn things we have to turn in. So, um, the layouts are really important. Um, usually, they have to include you know, legend, title, you know, geo reference, north arrow, scale bar, and just a you know text box saying your name and whatnot. Um, I didn't really do too good on that this this time, just because I was I wasn't really paying attention to that. Um, so if I, if I ever show this to my professor, wait, she's right there. If, when my professor sees this, I'm sure she'll be saying that you needed to add more stuff to your layouts. Um, okay, so the next thing I needed to do was run the flow accumulation tool. That can be found in our toolbox um, in the spatial analysis tools, hydrology, and flow, accumu flow accumulation. Um, the input raster I used was flow dir2, and I named the output flow accumulation. Um, also, it's important to note that you need to change that output data type. It's it's um, normally I set it float, I think, and you need to change it to integer to get the um, right kind of output. Okay, so there is the flow accumulation that, uh, data that I received. Uh, it looks kind of creepy, but it's it's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, okay, so the next tool I needed to to run. Um, I, I needed to. I, I knew that I needed to set it up so that I had a certain amount of um, cells populating each um, station of the raster data. So I um, ran the conditional tool or the con tool. Sorry, um, that can be found in the spatial analysis tools under conditional, and it's called con. Um, so the input additional raster I used was flow accumulation, and the value of expression I used was value is greater than five, fifty thousand. Um, the input true raster or constant raster value I put as one, and the net 50k was what I named the output. Okay, so this is what I got for the um, when I added it to ArcMap. Okay, and one of the last couple tools I had to run was um, was Streamlink tool. Um, so the Streamlink tool is can be found in our toolbox under hydrology, and that's Streamlink right there. Streamlink, sorry. Um, the dialog box is set up um, like this: the net 50k as the input stream, and the input flow direction I named as flow, or I use the flow direction two that I already created, and I named the output raster source one. So when I added that to ArcMap, it looked like this. Wait a second. Um, um, yeah, when I added it to ArcMap, it looked 
um, like this. And finally, I was, uh, I was able to use the watershed tool. Um, I, ran, I ran the tool. It, it, again, it's found under the hydrology and spatial analysis on our toolbox. Um, I used that um, flow two as the uh, input flow direction raster and the source one as the uh, input raster. And you don't need to change that um, value to anything. And I named the raster to watershed 50 to denote the same watershed 50K that I um, used. And that's what I got. That's not right. That is not the right one. Um, it, it looks similar to this. I can explain it. It looks similar to this. Um, it, it's got, it, it obviously populates the whole, I don't know why I didn't do this. It obviously populates the whole, um, the whole boundary for the dirt for the dew garden thing the dew garden parcel but um it shows the it, it, it's similar to this and it has more colors um but that's that's not right i don't know why it's not. um yes that is it thank you special thanks to my uh, wake tech professor holly bracket right there and uh thank you all for waiting around another 15 minutes to listen to me any questions Again, thanks for waiting. Oh, yes. yes. It's a two-year program, but I'll probably be completing it in 2.5 because I'm getting two or 2.5, uh, two, two years and a half because I'm getting two associates. Well, I, I could, I should have added a, a couple other things actually now that I think about it. I should have added, a, I did, a, I, I ended up doing this um, like four or five times probably. And on different computers, just because I said, you know, uh, the computers wipe themselves every night. Um, so I ended up doing it probably four or five times. I tried it uh, a couple ways. I tried it using this, you know, just manually, just each tool by themselves. And I also did it in um, in Model Builder. That was I, I probably liked that one better. I don't know why I didn't add that. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed both ways. Okay. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's, yeah. Okay. Definitely. All right. Thank you so much.